so let's talk a little bit about how to breathe diaphragmatically. We talked about the reasons why we want to breathe diaphragmatically, all the different benefits, and so now I'm going to show you actually how we're going to do it. There's a few different positions that you can try this breath in, so I'm going to explain the breath and then I will also show you the different positions. Try the, all of them and see which one allows you best to access the diaphragm. Another thing that's very important if you want to breathe diaphragmatically is your rib position, okay? Many of us are living in this flared rib position, so we don't even know it. We have a little bit of arch in the back. A lot of times it's from trying to have good posture or we have a bit of a pelvic tilt. If we're tilted anteriorly, so our pelvis is tilted to the back, um, to the front a little bit, and we have a little curve in the back, then we definitely have rib flare. I see a lot of mamas, um, a lot of people just have jobs where they have to sit a long time, have some rib flare, and it makes it difficult to access the diaphragm. So, what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands on your rib cage and then cough. <laughs> and when you cough, it pushes the rib cage down against your abdomen. That will keep you from being in a flared position. It will make it easier for you to breathe. The other way to think about it is if your rib cage is like a bell, okay? So it's shaped like a bell, front and the back, right? And when your ribs are flared, your bell is rung up a little bit, okay? So if you have a bell and it's rung up, Right, so thinking like Christmas time, ringing bells, um, all that jazz on your sleigh, going caroling. If the bell is rung up, then you wanna ring it down, okay? So again, <coughs> ribs are down, shoulders are down. That's the best position for you to breathe diaphragmatically. So you want to, if you're sitting up or you're sitting in a chair, make sure that the ribs are down and if you're on the floor, same thing. Okay, so the concept of breathing through the diaphragm and use, um, using the diaphragm, whenever you breathe, you're using the diaphragm, but we want to really make sure we're using it to its full potential, okay? When you are breathing in a shallow manner, you're using these accessory muscles. So you're using your chest, your neck, your shoulders to breathe, and you're lifting the chest in most of the air that you're saying. You'll notice that your chest will rise and fill, but you're not really getting any movement down here. So to breathe through the diaphragm, we need to get full breaths. I find that a lot of people struggle with this. When they first start, they're like, okay, I'm trying to breathe fuller. And there's two tricks that can help you to do this more effectively, in addition to the rib flare. So tame the rib flare, make sure the ribs are in position. The diaphragm needs to be just sort of like in the correct position to really do its job. Then when you're inhaling, you're going to put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, okay? So every time you inhale, tongue on the roof of your mouth behind your teeth, okay? And then when you exhale, you're exhaling as much air as you can get out. Now, if you are a shallow chest breather, like I have had historically a tendency to be, you are not in the habit of getting full breath. So I want you to take another inhale, tongue on the roof of your mouth, but this time when you exhale, I want you to exhale like you're exhaling through a straw, okay? So we're gonna inhale, and then exhale, close your lips just like a straw and breathe really slowly as you exhale out. You want to make sure you get as much air as you can out, don't pass out or anything, and you will feel as you um, exhale more air, you almost have this sort of corset feeling, right? Because your rib cage is going to be closing and you feel a little bit of hugging in your torso. You might even feel your pelvic floor lift and your transversus abdominis turn on a little bit too. Then once you've had a really good full exhale, it is easier for you to take a nice deep inhale, okay? So let's try it one more time, okay? So we're gonna take a nice, um, the best inhale we can, then we're gonna do a really long exhale, and then we're gonna do a nice deep inhale, okay? So ribs down, <coughs> cough, ribs down, okay. Exhale through a straw slowly. See how much longer my inhale was that time, right? Tongue on the roof of my mouth again, exhale. So as you practice this and you get a little bit deeper into the breath, a little bit more comfortable getting a really good full exhale and inhale, 
Now you're using your diaphragm. Keep imagining sending that breath down into the belly. Don't, not just expanding the belly, the chest will expand, like your, your ribs and your lungs are gonna expand 360 degrees. So it's like an umbrella that opens and then closes, opens and then closes. But visualize when you're breathing on your inhale, tongue in the roof of your mouth, sending that breath down, oxygenating the body, and then when you exhale, continue to use that straw cue as long as you need to, to get a really nice full exhale, and start to notice whether you can feel the diaphragm lifting, maybe the pelvic floor lifting a little bit, and the transversus abdominis right in between your hip bones hugging a little bit at the end. Okay, so give that a shot, and now I'm gonna show you some different positions that you can try this in to maybe help you feel um, a little bit like it's easier to access your diaphragm, okay. Okay, so if you are somebody that's in the habit of flaring your ribs, then you might find this position, laying on the floor or at a little bit of an incline, a good position for you. If you are a shallow chest breather, right? Um, I keep saying shallow, like it's a bad thing. We're not talking about your character or your personality, just your breathing habits. Um, so when you are in the habit of just taking these shallow breaths, a lot of times your rib cage and the muscles in between the ribs, right, your intercostal muscles, they are just kind of, tense, all right? They never really relax, and so they don't really fully expand. They're just kind of a little bit flared open. And so getting into this position can help to start to train your body to just relax the ribs, which is gonna make it easier for you to get a nice full breath. So you play with the incline. Everyone's body is different. The goal is to be in a position where your body is supported, your back is supported, and your ribs are not flaring. So you can use that coughing cue again, and make sure your ribs are down. And, you know, maybe you need more pillows, maybe you need less. They actually sell a wedge on Amazon, which is like um, physical therapists use to really get you in the perfect incline position. But you wanna make sure that all the airways are straight so that you can easily take in oxygen and then also, you know, exhale. So, hands on your ribs, make sure they're down. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do an inhale with our tongue on the roof of the mouth. And we're gonna do a nice slow exhale through a straw. Much bigger inhale that time, feeling my ribs expanding like the umbrella and then closing again, all right? So, Play with this position and see if that works for you. Make sure you're starting to feel a little bit more relaxation, a little bit deeper of a breath, more movement of the diaphragm as you continue to breathe. I want you to practice the diaphragmatic breathing for a minimum of three minutes, but if you can go for five, you will find it incredibly relaxing, calming. It's gonna help you to relax tension in your neck and your shoulders. It's gonna oxygenate um, your gut, give your belly space really support better digestion. So take the time, three to five minutes, okay? Let's check another position. So I actually find laying on my side is a good way. Sometimes I do this in bed at night just to relax. Um, make sure that your head is supported by a pillow. You always wanna make sure that your, you know, your airways are clear and not kinked in any way to make it easy for you to breathe. And prop up. And then we're gonna just do the same thing. We're gonna inhale, keep our tongue on the roof of our mouth. Focus on pushing that breath into the belly, into the chest, into the lungs, expanding, right? Not shallow up here in the neck and the chest exclusively. And then exhale through the straw. really feel that expansion, right? And it's nice to get a little feedback if you're on the bed or you're on the floor, you can feel your lungs expanding into the floor on that um, inhale and then exhale out again, all the air through a straw. Okay, I'm getting so relaxed. I could do this all day. 
Let's try one other position. Okay, so another position that's really helpful for accessing the diaphragm, on your belly. The floor is gonna give you some feedback. It's gonna help you to feel your belly relaxing into the floor and then lifting again. This is also um, a good position as far as just like, you know, just totally chilling out and relaxing. So you put your hands on, your head on your hands. Legs are, um, you know, hip distance apart. And we're just gonna do the same thing we were doing before. We're gonna put our tongue on the roof of our mouth and take an inhale. Exhale. The only thing about that position is that you gotta make sure that your shoulders don't creep up to your ears. Keep pushing them down um, because you wanna, that's gonna be helpful for making sure that we're pushing the breath down too. You don't wanna start to create any tension. So yeah, so try those positions. You can also just try laying totally flat on the floor without pillows. Try, so that's four options for you. See which one makes it easiest for you to get nice full breaths where you really feel like the air is going down, you're getting more relaxed, and you're feeling that movement of the diaphragm expanding down and then coming back up on the exhale, down and up. Now, we're gonna tie it to the pillow.